so I'm Rick Shepard with First Edge, and Tim, thanks a lot for stopping by again. Wanted to give you a brief update on what we've done since SHOT Show when we last spoke. Uh, we started uh, initially with a locking mechanism that, proprietary locking mechanism uh, that we're in the process of patenting right now that's fairly unique. Uh, the nice thing about it is you do not have to cross the blade while you're releasing it. It truly can be a one-handed uh, operation. It's extremely strong. You essentially have a shear pin going through the two steel liners. Uh, so we've, we've got some ind independent testing that we'll publish shortly. Uh, but so we still have a couple different options. We have three different blade designs at this point. Two of them we're just introducing this week. We've got the standard Tonto, which is the, the blade that we had introduced initially. Uh, just this week we've added a modified Tonto uh, and we've added a drop point. You can, uh, we've got three different options on the locking mechanism. We have a manual, an assist, and an auto. All leveraging our locking mechanism. Uh, so you can get the three different blade shapes, the three different blades in a manual, assist, or auto, and you have serration as, as an option on all three. They, uh, they asked us to address some problems they were having with their survival knife. The blades were breaking and the sheaths were breaking. So we're using LMAX seal. Um, about a month after we met with them and got their requirements and what they were looking for and their design specifications, we were able to deliver a prototype with them. So extremely rapid turnaround on that. Um, we're, we're using LMAX steel, which is, which is extremely strong. It's hardened to 6061 Rockwell and has tremendous rust and corrosion resistance properties. Holds an edge extremely well. Arguably one of the best blade steels on the market. Uh, we, we designed this to their specifications, so there's no serrations. It's pretty simple. Uh, there is an attitude adjuster on the back here. This is what they wanted. Uh, they have adopted this as standard issue in their SQT kit. Uh, on the sheath, uh, their sheaths were breaking in cold weather and extreme use, uh, so we've, we've modified it slightly. Most Kydex sheaths are folded in half and riveted shut. Uh, what we've done is we have separate pieces of Kydex, and we actually have a steel rib running down each side. When it's fastened, when it's riveted shut, it's very difficult to service or clean in the field. Uh, we've made this a take-apart sheet. The nylon on the back, the prior version for the seals had a composite material here uh, that was getting worn and ripping. Uh, we have a drain hole in the bottom. They mentioned that they were having a similar problem with their uh, with their knives and bud schools with their sheaths. They asked us to design a sheath uh, for their bud's knife and a new bud's knife uh, for the seal training. We did, we designed it and we did it with LMAX steel also. Um, the problem with that was the everybody loved it except for the instructors. The instructors wanted, uh, wanted to be able to uh, really train maintaining equipment to the trainees going through the bud school. Uh, so they started to purchase this for deployment and have subsequently added this to the CQT kit, another kit that NSW is purchasing our product for for deployment. Uh, but it didn't get in the bud school. Uh, we subsequently have introduced a new knife and this one is the same design, the same sheath and we're using 440 C steel here. Um, so a couple things this does is one it allows the uh, the trainees going through the bud school to actually maintain their gear a little bit better. This is a great, also a great steel when it's uh, heat treated properly, which um, I'm confident we have. Um, but for the consumer, what it does is it actually lowers the price point and makes it more mainstream.